you first uh, as quickly as I can is, uh, is some, some foundational work, some, some new technology that uh, we brought to Microsoft as part of an acquisition uh, almost exactly a year ago. Uh, this is Sea Dragon, and it's an environment in which you can either locally or remotely interact with vast amounts of, uh, of visual data. We're looking at many, many gigabytes of, uh, of, of digital photos here and kind of seam seamlessly and uh, continuously zooming and padding through the thing, rearranging it any way we want. And um, it doesn't matter how much information we're looking at, how big these collections are, or how big the images are, and the most of them are ordinary uh, digital camera photos, but this one, for example, is a scan from the Library of Congress, and it's in the, in the 300 megapixel range. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't make any difference because the only thing that, that ought to limit the performance of a system like this one is the number of pixels on your screen at any given moment. Uh, it's also a very flexible architecture. Uh, this is an entire book, so this is an example of non-image uh, non data. Uh, this is uh, Bleak House by Dickens. Every, every column is, uh, is a chapter, and uh, to prove to you that it's, that it's really text and not an image, we can do something like so. Uh, to really show that this is a, a real representation of the text, it's not a picture. Uh, maybe this is a kind of an artificial way to read an e-book, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, this is a more realistic case, this is an issue of The Guardian. Every uh, large image is the beginning of a section, and this really gives you the, the, the joy and the good experience of reading uh, the real paper version of, um, of a magazine or, or a newspaper. Uh, which is an inherently multi-scale kind of medium. We've also done a little something with the corner of, uh, of this particular issue of The Guardian. We've uh, made up a fake ad that's very high resolution, uh, much higher than you'd be able to get in an ordinary ad, and we've embedded extra content. You've got to see the features of this car, you can see it here, or uh, other models, uh, or even technical specifications. <laughs> and uh, and this, this, really, this really gets at some of these ideas about uh, really doing away with, uh, with those limits on, on screen real estate. We hope that this means uh, no more, no more pop-ups and other kind of rubbish like that should be necessary. In the past year and a half, we've been very hard at work on redefining the way maps work online. And we really are seeing this in very different terms from the kind of mapping and direction site that, uh, that one is used to. Mapping is, of course, uh, not just about cartography, it's also about imagery. So as we zoom in uh, beyond a certain level, this resolves into a kind of SimCity-like virtual view at 45 degrees. This can be viewed from any of the cardinal directions to show you the 3D structure of the city, all the facades. Um, but I'm, I'm going to show you some more uh, candy sort of stuff. So um, we, we see the imagery, of course, not stopping at the sky. Um, these little green bubbles uh, represent uh, photosynths that users have made. Uh, I'm not going to dive into them either, but photosynths are integrated into the map. Everything that's cased in blue is uh, an, an area where we've taken imagery on the ground as well. And so when you fly down from the... Uh, thank you. When you fly down to the ground and you see this, uh, this kind of panoramic imagery, the first thing that you might notice is that it's not just, uh, it's not just a picture. There's just as much three-dimensional understanding of this environment as there is of, uh, of the three-dimensional city from above. Now, um, I'll show you a, a fun app um, that uh, we've, um, we've been working on in collaboration with our friends at Flickr. This takes Flickr uh, geo-registered imagery and uh, uses photosynth-like processes to uh, connect that imagery to our imagery. So I'm not sure if that's the one I actually meant to, uh, to pull up, but, <laughs> but notice... Um, this is, of course, a popular tourist site, and there are lots of photos around here. And uh, these photos are all taken at different times. Uh, so this one was taken around five. Uh, so that's the Flickr photo. That's, uh, that's our imagery. Uh, now, I just made a transition indoors. Uh, that's also interesting. Okay, notice there's now a roof above us. We're inside uh, the Pike Place Market. And this is something that we're able to do with a backpack camera. So we're now not only, not only imaging uh, in the street, with this uh, camera on tops of cars, but we're also imaging um, inside. And uh, from here, we're able to do the same sorts of registration, uh, not only of, um, of still images, but also of video. So this is something that we're now going to try uh, for the first time uh, live, and it's, this is really, truly very frightening. Um, okay. Ah. All right, guys, are you there? All right, I'm hitting it. I'm punching play. I'm live. All right, there we go. So uh, these are our friends in Pike Place Market, the, the lab. Thank you. Um, 
And um, they're, so they're, they're broadcasting this live. Okay, uh, George, can you pan, wait, can you pan back over to the corner market? Because I want to I wanna show points of interest. Hey, yo, no, no, the other way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back to the corner, back to the corner. I don't want to see you guys yet. <laughs> okay, okay. Back to the corner, back to the corner. Back to the corner. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm going to abandon them now and walk back outside. And while I, while I walk outside, I'll just mention that um, here we're using this for telepresence, but you can equally well use this uh, on the spot for augmented reality. When you use it on the spot, it means that you're able to bring all of that metadata and information about the world to you. So here we're taking the extra step of also broadcasting it. That was being broadcast, by the way, on a 4G network uh, from, um, from the market. All right, and uh, now uh, there's one last TED talk that Microsoft has given in the past uh, several years, uh, and that's Curtis Wong, Worldwide Telescope. So we're gonna head over to the dumpsters, where it's traditional after a long day at the market to go out for a break and also stare up at the sky. Um, this is the integration of Worldwide Telescope into, um, into our maps. This is the, the current, thank you. This is the current time. If we scrub the time, then we can see how, how the sky will look at different times, and we can get all of this very detailed information about um, different, different times, different dates. Um, let's, let's move the, the moon a little higher in the sky, maybe change the, change the date. I would like to kind of zoom in on the moon. So uh, this is, this is uh, astronomically complete representation of the, of the sky, uh, integrated right into, um, right into the Earth. All right, now I've, I've overrun my time, so I've got to stop. Uh, thank you all very much.